You're watching MMA Odds Breaker. I'm Frank Trigg. Today, we got Joey Beltran on the other end. He's actually not at a warehouse like I thought he was at, doing his regular job. He's actually at uh, Alliance Training Center right now. Joey, uh, unlike uh, most people think at home, you're not a millionaire. You're not just uh, living living in a lap of luxury. You actually got to work a little bit. You still work even though you're in training camp? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually got to teach a couple classes today. Um... Let's see, I got I got kids, kids kickboxing, and then cardio kickboxing, and that's it. So I only got two classes today, short short load. That's your normal schedule, even during training camp. No, my normal schedule during training camp, I teach five o'clock. I'll teach a kids class. Six o'clock, I'll teach a cardio kickboxing style class. And seven o'clock is like a skill class, either Muay Thai or or Jiu-Jitsu. And then eight o'clock is uh, like a boot camp. Like a strength conditioning class. So when do you find time to train? On the daytime, bro. <laughs> we'll have plenty of time to sleep when we're dead. It's all good. Do you, if, uh, uh, say, uh, um, Michael Chandler came in and said, hey, I got this new sponsor for you. They're going to cover all your class load. You know, as far as the pay goes, we'll be able to transfer out. Would you stop coaching or do you like coaching so much you'd always coach no matter what? Um, I would stop some of the classes. I would still coach the kids my kids classes that's uh, that's the most what i have invested the most time in and uh you know my heart and soul is goes into teaching those kids i wouldn't be too upset about not teaching cardio kickboxing anymore <laughs> well come on isn't that the way dana white made his uh made his start in the mma as he was doing cardio kickboxing and then pitch the fatitas the ufc and look at him now i know that that, that is the word on the street I, when i read those articles and, and people say it in like in a derogatory way like i've always thinking oh I'm gonna go coach cardio kickboxing today. <laughs> it's the uh, it's the best way, actually. It's uh, you start small, and then all of a sudden you end up owning the joint, and then all of a sudden you end up owning a conglomerate. So it actually works out nicely. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the Igor uh, uh, Pogacic fight back in December of 2012. Ends up being a no contest uh, on that. What happened during that fight? Uh, well, during the fight, I you know I. I think I did an awesome job. Uh, he was a very dangerous, dangerous striker, heavy-headed striker. Um, so, you know, I just closed the distance, grabbed the whole of him, didn't let go, and kept hitting him the whole fight. And um, he, he didn't really have an answer. I, I went back to the old uh, – I watched the Randy Couture versus Gabriel Gonzaga fight over and over and over again and just saw how you neutralize somebody who's bigger, faster, stronger than you. And I just did it. Basically what went down. <laughs> There, uh, why did it get overturned though? Why did it get turned into a no contest? Oh, okay. I tested positive for nandrolone, which uh, I didn't even know what the hell that is, but I looked it up and it's called Deca. Deca is the street name. And I, uh, yeah, man, a little bit I do know is Deca is like the old school go down to Tijuana, you shoot it up, you gain 20 pounds in a month steroid. And you look at me. I don't really, if I was doing deck, I'd better get a damn refund because I don't really have much muscles. I don't, I'm not cut. I'm glad you handles. said it. I still have love handles at 205, but you know, that, that's me. So I, I have a couple, a uh, couple guesses as far as what it was that was, uh, that would have got me to pop. Basically, I, I learned a lot from the experience. Main thing is don't buy anything off the internet and don't, especially don't buy anything that has extreme in the title uh, because it's probably going to be bad. Yeah, and there's a, there's a lot of that going around. We, we were talking about this. Uh, um, the Olympia was just here in Las Vegas, so all the bodybuilders were in town. And we were talking about it. A lot of these supplement companies cheat and make their product cheaper by buying Mexican yeah. steroids and putting them in their powder because it makes the product work better. So everyone thinks, oh, look at me. I'm, I look better because I'm taking this protein. But it's really got a bunch of steroids in it because it's cheaper than making the product correctly. Uh, how hard is it for you, especially being down in San Diego? I mean, you get a lot of product that's right on the border. It's right across, you know, like, like 15, 20 miles from where you're at. How hard is it to find supplements that are actually good and you know that you can trust and take? Well, I mean, obviously that's a mistake that I only want to make one time. And so this, this training camp, um, all I did was basically just eat healthy and at the most was take a, take a protein from uh, my – Supplement sponsor MRM, and that's about it, man. I, I didn't I didn't play the, I didn't play take any chances. So that's that. That's how I did it. And, that, and that's for a while. It's got a lot. A lot of the guys are going to have to do it coming up. They're going to have to do the exact same thing as you until they can get a lot of these supplements figured out and worked out, and until they get 
other ones that are that are cleared is part of the problem. So, well, let's move on and talk about Fabio real quick. You're getting ready to fight uh, Fabio Maldonado uh, down at UFC Fight Night 29 in Brazil. First, let's talk about the travel. Will uh, jet lag be an issue? It's only a couple hours difference, but the travel, still getting down a foreign country, foreign food, you know, uh, is it going to be a problem for you? No, I mean, that kind of stuff doesn't really bother me. Um, thank God I already I already had experience going down to a, uh, even a farther trip down to Australia. So this is actually going to be short in comparison to that. It's only 10 hours compared to the 18 hours. Um, so, you know, I, I just want to make sure that right when I get off the plane, even if I'm tired, force myself to, to hit a really hard workout and, uh, you know, get, get my body uh, acclimated to where I'm at and then just chill force myself to stay up because we arrive like at seven o'clock. We arrive at seven o'clock Saturday morning. We leave tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow in the daytime. So force myself to stay up and, and get on a normal schedule. Okay. Now with, with, uh, Fabio, he's, you guys both fought Igor. So you have that in comparison. Did you watch that fight a lot to kind of see how Igor beat him? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I watched that fight. I watched also the fights that he won, you know, see how, you know, the positions he likes to get in to, to, to dominate and stuff. So I don't watch too much film, to be honest with you. I, I, I watch it. I'll obsess over it for like a couple days, and then that's it. I won't watch it again the rest of the training camp, and I'll just worry about what I'm going to try to do. What did uh, – who's going to corner you for this one? Who's cornering me? Yeah. Oh, uh, my teammate Eric Uresk. And uh, the thing is, so the reason why Coach Del Fiero can't come with me is he's going to get married on Friday the 12th. Now we fly back. If everything goes okay, we'll arrive Friday the 11th. But we can't take a chance and have him, you know, we get delayed or something funky like that goes down and then he misses his wedding. That was, and, uh, uh, that was my question. The reason why I was asking who was cornering you because I know that, that Eric is, is very instrumental in, in putting together your game plan and making sure everything goes correctly. But he can't fly this time because of his wedding. Uh, is that going to be, you know, what, what's going to happen then down down the, in the actual fight when you're getting cornered? Like, how is that going to be put together? Well, I'm, I'm, I have all the confidence in the world, and uh, my teammate. He's also runs wrestling practice, so I already have him mentally, you know, in that coach category. Even though it's technically my teammate, you know, I, I'm used to taking direction from him. I recognize that voice. I can find his voice. We've already practiced, uh, you know, practiced in practice, him cornering me, him coaching me through positions. And, um, yeah, so I really don't think it's going to be a problem. It's going to be – like, it's going to be a straightforward fight anyways. You know, it's going to be like we met in a dark alley. Who's going to walk out, basically? Not going to be much uh, – <laughs> I don't think they're going to have a jujitsu – a jujitsu trade off, like uh, in the main event or anything super technical. It's going to be who who wants it more and who's in better shape. And what are, have you done anything differently during this training camp for your shape than you than any other training camp? Well, I've been in basically I've been in fighting shape for ten months. So I, you know, the cliche that oh, this is the best I've ever felt. I hate to use it, but it's true. I haven't had to push through. You know, hard days, like, you know, in your training camp you, and you feel banged up, you're like, all right, but I got to go. I got to do a tour day. Yeah. You know, whereas for like the last 10 months, I've been pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. Someday my joints feel really bad or my neck or my back, and I'll take a half a day because I'm not in tra I'm technically wasn't in training camp. So I've been able to push my cardio and, and push with uh, without having to sacrifice my body. Like I said, for the last 10 months, man, I've just been pissed off and angry and now it's going to come out, so. Perfect. I think it's going to be the best I've ever performed. Good. Joey, thanks for coming on here with MMA Oddsbreaker. Good luck on UFC Fight Night 29. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, man. Have a good one, brother.